Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is the 31st of October 2016. So this is a podcast about knitting and sometimes also spinning or sewing, and I'm so glad that you're joining me today to talk about some knitting. Um, if you're watching for the first time, I really hope that you'll like it, and maybe you'll become a subscriber and watch this more regularly in the future. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much. Before we dive into finished objects and works in progress and all that, let's do some organizational stuff. So first of all, um, some of you might know that I'm actually leaving to go to Thailand tomorrow. We are taking a trip together. I've been to Thailand before and this time we're just going to relax and spend time in the south of Thailand and it's going to be really, really amazing. I'm so looking forward to it. But that does mean that the podcast will go on a little hiatus. Um, in fact, I probably record exactly three weeks from now. That's the plan for now is to record on the 21st of uh, November when we get back. So if you want to stay in touch, the best way to do so is probably through uh, Instagram. I am the Happy Knitting Podcast on Instagram and I would probably be posting lots of beach photos and less knitting related photos. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but that's probably what's going to happen. And I'll try to use the stories modus more where you can post photos for 24 hours. So for those of you who are interested, you might want to use that to see what I'm up to. Um, we also have a Ravelry group, which is called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group. And if there's anything you need, like the show notes, or if you have questions, or if you want to introduce yourself, or just join into the general chatter, there's lots of threads there. So I can only encourage you to go there, and I will be checking Ravelry as well. So if you have anything urgent, I won't be checking maybe like every three hours, but I will definitely be reachable there as well. And my um, private or personal Ravelry account, I guess, is Wipfi, which is W-U-E-P-F-I. So that's it for the holiday organization stuff. I also just published a new pattern, which is the shawl that I'm wearing right now. I won't be able to take it off because I have my microphone attached to it, but I'll throw in some pictures. So it's a brioche shawl. It's my first um, brioche pattern that I've published. And um, all the details are on the project page. It's called Brioche with a Twist. It is not exactly a beginner's pattern. I kind of expect you to know the basics of two color um, brioche. And by and I mean uh, knitting flat, not in the round. But if you are super, super adventurous, um, go for it. It's not a difficult pattern at all. You just kind of need to get the hang of the basic brioche stitch and then there's a few increases and decreases and that's pretty much it. So thank you for everyone who has supported me, for the uh, lovely people who test knitted for me. Um, and just to thank you all and um, everyone, I have created a coupon code which gives you 15% off this pattern and all my other patterns. So until November 6th, which is next Sunday, German time, or Berlin time, I suppose, um, you can get 15% off all of my patterns using the co um, code HAPPY KNITTING, all capitals. So make sure you take advantage of that and you can use that code more than once as well. So thank you so much for everyone who supported me. But yeah, I'm coupon code HAPPY KNITTING. And I hope that you like this shawl. It is a two-color brio shawl, as you can see. And I think it's really versatile. I only used, I, I did, I, it's written for two skeins of fingering weight yarn but you can use a little bit less. So for example, I only used 70 grams of each skein and I still got a um, shawl that's as big as my wingspan. So you can make this really, really large. It's very customizable and all the instructions are in the pattern. It is a written pattern, but I've also included like a schematic of the shawl to help you through that because I just, for the way that the pattern is written, a chart didn't really make any sense. So, like I said, thank you so to everyone who bought the pattern already, and I really, really, really appreciate it. 
And yeah, I get really excited when people comment on it or, you know, when I get an email saying that someone got the pattern or if you're creating projects, I absolutely love it. And I always check the project pages for all of my um, design patterns. So that's the brioche with a twist shawl. Um, and I think with that, we are ready to go into some finished objects. So I have two finished objects today. The first is not a surprise. These are my boyfriend's socks and you might remember how I was really, really proud of keeping them as a surprise because I failed before. And I actually finished these and I was so happy to have these finished and he didn't catch me knitting on them. And then he told me that he saw my Ravelry page and he thought they were really pretty so he clicked on them and he realized they were for him. So these are not a surprise anymore but he's only seen a picture and I haven't given them to him yet. Because these are supposed to be for his birthday which will be when we get back. So unfortunately not a surprise anymore but what can I do? My boyfriend loves socks and he loves Ravelry and yeah he's very interested in what I'm knitting. So the yarn that I use for this is Lang Super Socks in the colorway number 86. And as you can see, I purposely did not match these, but made them completely different, I guess, by starting one with the gray and one with the yellow. So I really like how they are not matching, in fact. Um, I only, ha as you can see, the stitch marker here, I didn't have very much to go when I showed them to you last, so I just finished these off. Um, these are plain vanilla socks. Knit on US size 1 needles, which is 2.25 millimeter needles. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. I think the pattern is really cute and nice. And yeah, I really like knitting with commercial sock yarn every now and then. I think it's really fun. So you can just kind of fly through the pattern because you're waiting for the next stripe and for the next repeat. And so yeah, they're, they've been really, really fun. So that's pair number one that I finished. The second pair that I finished, I wasn't really planning on finishing them, but somehow I just kind of worked on them a lot. And these are my charade socks. In fact, it's a combination of two patterns. The pattern that I use is a free pattern called charade socks, as I said, on Ravelry, but I use the heel from a different pattern called vanilla is a new black, which is a paid for pattern that includes this sort of different heel construction, which I thought was really, really interesting. In hindsight, um, knitting both a pattern on the front and a different heel kind of took a lot of time. But I'm really, really happy with how these turned out. And with this one I should give you a close-up. So you can see the stitch pattern on the front. It's really, really, really pretty. I absolutely love it. And I only did it on the front of the sock, as you can see. And this is the Vanilla is a New Black heel which as you can see, it creates a very, very roomy heel. So if you have a, especially, especially if you have a high instep, this would be a good heel for you, I think, because you just have a lot of space here. Um, besides that, I did a one by one ribbing for 20 rows. And yeah, the colorway is, um, it's by Somerset Yarns, who are in the UK. And the colorway is Unicorn Pop. So yeah, I'm super, super happy with these. As you can see, um, they have really long cuffs. And the reason for that is that um, the heel, um, like I think I started the heel around here, but the heel is just, it takes, it elongates the cuff a lot. So if you want to knit these and you don't like long cuffs, I would recommend starting the heel earlier than I did. Because I thought I was starting it very early, but still. As you can see, the cuff is super, super long. It is a lot longer than the foot. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. This yarn was amazing to use. Then this um, Somerset yarn, I think it was just in her sock base. It's a merino nylon blend. And I absolutely love the blend. I felt like this specific yarn base um, just knit really, really, really nicely. And I like these sort of speckled um, sock yarns that don't stripe. I think sometimes they're a little bit more elegant than just variegated yarns that create pooling and striping, even though I also like that. So yeah, I'm really, really happy to have these off the needles. Um, last time I was just, I think I just started the patterning up here. So I just kind of breezed through this. And I was really curious to see if the heel was going to be faster the second time. And it was definitely faster, but still, I feel like the heel takes a lot of time, but that's also because while you're knitting the heel, you're still knitting in the round. So you're essentially knitting quite a lot of, of cuff as well. So I think that's why it just feels a lot longer. So I, I definitely think I'm going to knit this heel again 
but I probably want to wear it first. It fits me really, really well, but I just want to get a more of an idea of how much I like it before I put it into all of my socks. But I am planning to use it again, probably on a vanilla sock. So yeah, really happy with these. Um, yeah, I'll definitely wear these when we get back from the holiday. I really like the idea of um, coming back from a holiday and having a pair of socks waiting for me. Um, if I haven't mentioned this, I have a cold, which is probably why my voice sounds a little different. I feel, I don't, I don't feel like I sound very nice today. I hope you guys don't mind. It's just, it was either this or not recording. So let's move on to works in progress. And as usual, I'll show you my blanket first. I think I've only done like four squares today, but you can see how nicely it folds up. It's a proper blanket now. I'm just kind of, I just keep, I'm, well, I don't want to finish it just yet, but I'm just going to keep knitting on it until I get sick of it, and then I'll probably just bind off and be done with it. Um, so this week I knit four squares. And this one, I already, when I took a photo, this one showed up very blue, but it's actually a really, really beautiful purple. This is a mini that I got from my friend Stephanie. I believe it's from Das Mocha, but it's not showing up very well at all, unfortunately. This one is um, from Wolkenschaf, which I used to knit a pair of socks for myself. These were my master thesis socks, as I like to call them, because I finished them and wore them the day that I handed in my thesis, about a month ago. This one is also from Stephanie. I'm pretty sure this one is from Das Mondschaf as well, and it's really, really, really pretty. And then last night I put in this square, which is from Miss Mothballs on Etsy. And again, I used this to knit a pair of socks and knit a pair of Hermione socks. And Hermione's Everyday Socks, and it's in her tweed base. And the colorway is Raspberry Cheesecake, I believe. So four squares this week. I have been kind of averaging that, which I think is okay. It means that I am progressing, but I'm not making crazy amounts of progress, of course. Um, let's refocus. So for works in progress, I only have two works in progress because I've really been trying to get stuff done so I can take new projects on the holiday and I don't have to come back and have all these lingering works in pro project progress waiting for me. So that's why I kind of hurried up to finish these ones as well. So I just like to clear as many needles as possible before we leave. So in my bag from Nalibes on Etsy, who is a German indie dyer and bag maker, um, I have a pair of socks, of course. I've only been knitting on socks lately, as you might have realized, and that's just a symptom of how much I've been stressed. Because whenever I'm stressed, all I knit is socks and maybe blanket squares, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, life has been super, super busy. So I, ca um, I showed these to you last week. These are vanilla socks using this yarn, which was from a club from Tausendschön. This was in their Verwegenen Club. They have different clubs in the Verwegenen are their skeins that have speckles. So I think this is really fun. I think they've only been doing that for a couple of months now. So the, um, it only says um, special number two. So that's the name of the colorway, I suppose. And I finished the first sock. Um, again, you can probably see the stitch marker down here. I didn't have very much to go. So I finished the first sock. It's a vanilla sock. Um, 64 stitches with 15 rows of one by one ribbing and a fish lips kiss heel. And I started the second one and I have just turned the heel as you might be able to see. So I'm really, really happy with how these are knitting up. They're feeling a little bit too big for me, which I'm not really sure why, but these are just going to be house socks or whatever. I don't really care. I think they're super, super fun and I love how the speckles are working up in this one as well. I think this is just a really, really fun yarn, and the yarn is also quite affordable, in case you're wondering, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with these, and I have three skeins of this kind of yarn because of the club, so I'm really looking forward to, knit, to knitting with the other ones as well. So again, I'm knitting these using US size 1 2.25 millimeter needles, and as you can see, I knit the cuff relatively long. Usually I do about 80 rows of stockinette after the cuff. This time I think I did 76. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to having these finished as well. And I think these would look really, really cute um, to wear with boots and leggings and kind of have these like 
on the outside, I think they would look really, really fun. So yeah, that's my first pair of socks on the needles. And then I was really trying to just finish things, but I had to cast on one more thing just because I was getting bored of always knitting the same things. And as you know, I usually have about four works in progress. So only having two for about two or three weeks half has just kind of made me a little bit bored. But I decided to cast on another pair of gift socks because I wanted to knit these for Christmas anyway. So I figured if I cast these on now, I'm not really doing anything bad and I, allow I allowed myself the cast on. At least that's how I've reasoned with myself. So I cast on a pair of Christmas socks for my sister Pauline. So if you're watching, please stop watch watching now. My sisters usually don't watch, but then the other sister is actually in the States at the moment and she said to me the other day that she was missing us and she was watching my podcast to kind of catch up, which was cute. So anyways, Pauline, if you're watching, please look away. So ever since I bought this yarn, I kind of knew that I was going to use this to make socks for my sister. Um, the yarn is Opal. And this is one of the quite popular colorways. It's from their Sweet and Spicy range number three. And the uh, and colorway is called Frucht Nougat or 9120. So this is the logo. I think there's what a sweet and sp sweet and spicy series is one of their most popular ones. So I decided to knit my sister a pair of vanilla socks and I have a hope. I finished the first one and how fun is this colorway? I think it is so cute. And like I said from the beginning, I ordered quite a bit of opal as you might remember. But this one was the only one where I was sure that this was going to be for Paulina because these are just her colors and I, ho I hope so anyways, but they, they just totally remind me of her. So I cast on a vanilla sock um, using one by one ribbing for 15 rows. And as you can see, I did a short cuff. My sisters usually like shorty socks, but they said they would like to try some socks that are a little bit longer, but they don't want the really long cuffs as I usually knit for myself which makes these really, really fun. It's really, really fun to knit for my sisters, but also because they have small feet. So I cast on 60 stitches. I think I did about 40 or 50 rows of stockinette. And I threw in the fish lips kiss heel and knit the foot. And how cute is this? I'm just so in love with this sock yarn. Um, this is my third time now knitting with Opal. I've been kind of testing it out and I've been noticing that um, they are different in the bases. I'm not sure if it's just to do with the dye lots or something, but the first one I knit was quite scratchy. And then the second pair that I knit for my other sister were really, really soft. And this one is more on the scratchy side again, but it's fine. And I especially like how the heel is kind of has the stripe on this side and on this side, so it just fits perfectly. I have not decided if I'm going to match the second one or if I'm just going to do whatever because my sister is kind of the type that I think she would like mismatched socks as well. But I'm not quite sure yet. Obviously, I have not cast on the second one. But yeah, they're so cute and I can't stop showing them to you because I just think they're adorable. And this knit up super fast. Um, I've been measuring how, much, how long it takes me to knit socks and my boyfriend's socks. It took me between five and six hours. I think five hours pretty much to knit one sock, like pure knitting time without trying to break records or anything. And, but this one I knit on DPNs and I feel like I'm slow on DPNs. So this one took me four and a half hours, but it's quite a short sock. So I'm kind of surprised by that, it, that by the fact that it took me not that much. I didn't finish it a lot quicker than this one. Whereas the size, you can see this one is a lot smaller. So anyways, Maybe you'll find that interesting. I just kind of like to mix things up every now and then, I think. By now, I actually prefer Magic Loop, but I just felt like knitting on DPNs. So the DPNs that I did use were my knit pursings in the 2.25 millimeter colorway uh, size. When it comes to um, DPNs, I think the um, knit pursings are really my favorite because they just slide so well, even though they are definitely not very sharp at all. It's funny, I either use the DPNs from Knit Pro Zing or I use higher, higher sharps. But while I really, really like the higher, higher sharps for circular needles for DPNs, sometimes I just find them too sharp and too fiddly, which doesn't really make sense because I really, like I said, I really like them on circulars. But anyways, I'm just rambling now and I'm holding up the sock because it's so cute. That's my second and only 
at the work in progress. And I'm just keeping them in, in this bag that I got from my lovely friend Jennifer that says, just one more row. And this is actually really good while traveling as well, so I think I might take that with me to Thailand. So regarding my knitting plans for Thailand, I'm planning to take just maybe stuff for two or three pairs of socks. I'm not really a travel knitter, I must admit. Like, I know that lots of people like to knit out and about and they use every second they have. Like, if you're on the tube or if you're going somewhere or in the car to knit, and I don't really do that. So, I'm not really anticipating to, to knit a lot while I'm in Thailand. I'm probably just going to take a couple of skeins of sock yarn and knit in there, like at the hotel or when watching TV or something, but I'm not really planning to take it out with me. So obviously I'm not going to take half finished objects, I'm just going to take a couple of skeins of sock yarn and a couple of needles and that's probably going to be it. So theoretically I could probably finish um, my speckle socks um, before we leave and then I'll have one less work in prog uh, progress to worry about when we get back, but I'm not quite sure if I want to put that on me. But I only have to knit the foot, so I, sh I certainly could. But yeah, um, some people have been asking how I'm going to handle knitting on the plane and <laughs> disappointing answer is I'm not going to knit on the plane. I'm just going to take my favorite needles and throw them in my backpack, like my big travel backpack and put that in the tech luggage because I have no nerves to deal with um, security and worry about needles being stolen and I'm really, really particular about the needles that I like. So taking wooden needles or something would just kind of annoy, so, annoy me so much. So I'm not going to knit on the plane so I'm sorry for all those of you who've been asking about great travel trips. I'm just not going to risk it. And like I said, I'll probably knit some a little bit and maybe I'll miss it a lot. But I mean, we're only gone for like two and a half weeks anyway. So I'm just not going to make a big fuss. And because we're going to be backpacking again, I don't want to take a kilo of yarn with me because I would have to carry that. So that's my travel knitting plans. I also wanted to talk to you about my yarn stats because I just monitor um, yarn in and yarn out. That means um, if I buy something, obviously that is gain in. And if I either knit something or de-stash something or whatever, that's a skein out of the stash. And for example, like if I finish a pair of socks and I have 20 grams left, I'm still going to count that as one skein because the leftovers are just going to be used for swaps or for blankets or whatever. So this um, month I started off really, really badly by ordering seven skeins of Opal sock yarn. And in total I got um, 11 skeins of yarn, like seven skeins of Opal and four other skeins. Two of which I haven't shown you yet. I'll show that to you in a second. And I have um, used up or de-stashed 12 skeins of yarn. So I am definitely in the clear. I used more yarn than I bought. Um, and I knit five pairs of socks, two shawls, one pair of mittens, and one hat. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that's interesting to you. Please give me feedback if it is or if it isn't. But that's my yarn stats for this week, I, uh, for this month. I felt really, really bad about buying so much yarn in the beginning of the month. But I have been knitting a crazy amount, as you probably have realized. I was planning to knit four pairs of socks in October. And then somehow I managed five, which was a little bit insane. But that's just really because I haven't been knitting any big projects and obviously I've been on the job hunt and I've had lots of time as well. I will admit that. So I am definitely counting on knitting less once I start working. So the, anyways, that's my yarn stats and I have two little acquisitions to show you. I really wasn't planning on any bu buying any yarn. Remember how I said that last week? Well, uh, my friend came, a knitting, a knitting friend came over and we spent a day talking about yarn and touching yarn and I actually de some yarn to her so I felt like, oh well, you know, I had to buy something because obviously whenever we meet we end up going to a yarn store and I have a yarn, yarn store basically just across the street. So it was pretty much inevitable that we we're going to go there and I really like their store and I like the owner, so I like to get something. So I got two bowls of commercial sock yarn. Um, the first one I saw, they had this in a bin on the outside, just on sale, and I just thought this was really cute. This is Lang yarn in the Jawohl color, whatever that means. 
So it's not their super socks. But yeah, this is just sort of like a self-patterning sock. And again, it's really, really autumn autumnal. I've been buying these sort of autumnal commercial sock yarns and I haven't really been using them. So I should probably start using that. But it's called, it says Aktion. It's a super wash yarn. Um, the colorway is 1320318. So I'm assuming this is some sort of like special, maybe one soft colorway, I'm not quite sure. But what it has, which I haven't used before, is it gives you this reinforcement yarn in the same colorway. So the way I get it is you're supposed to use this for heels and toes. I mean, that's what would make sense to me. But if anyone has used this stuff before, let me know. I'm curious to try it. Even though I haven't really needed reinforcement in my SIM socks so far. But yeah, this is interesting. So if you have used this stuff before, like the sort of reinforcement yarn, definitely let me know. And I have 10 grams of this reinforcement yarn. And now I can't get it back to where it goes. Anyway, so this is the first skein or ball of yarn that I bought. And then I also grabbed another skein that I've just been looking at so many times. I've had this in my hand very often and they have different, I think they have these colors, but they have different strapping colorways with it. So my friend bought one with um, sort of like very, very thin stripes. And this one has thicker stripes. I'm not sure if you can see it here. But I just decided to get it because I've been looking at it and touching it so many times. And this is, again, the same yarn that I've been using for my boyfriend's socks, so I know that I like it. I like knitting with it. This is Lang Super Socks. Color in the colorway number 96. So yeah, I just grabbed these two. I feel slightly bad about them, but then I don't, because in my mind I was saving money because I was de-stashing expensive yarn and buying cheap yarn. So that's how my mind works. So next I'm just going to talk a little bit about life in general, which is what's been happening with me and with my life and stuff that's been going on that's not necessarily knitting related. So if you're not interested in that, that's totally fine. In that case, I will just see you in three weeks. I hope you have a great time until then. Of course, I would always love to hear from you. Happy knitting. See ya. And if, you're sti if you are sticking around, um, I'm just going to be talking about what's been going on. So this week has been another super stressful one, as I've mentioned before. Anyway, so um, as I said before, I was expecting this week to be my last week uh, before we go away and to kind of be relaxing and you know, packing and getting stuff ready, but instead it's been a week of preparing for a job interview and meeting lots of people, which has been really, really great, but I've just been feeling like I'm running after things that need to be done and not catching up, to be honest. But I did have a good week. I, like I said, I had, I met a few knitting friends actually this week, which was really, really fun. Um, and then on Thursday I had my job interview, which went really well, I think. My expectation was to try to not majorly screw up. I was really, really worried about, you know, falling down the stairs or saying something really stupid or whatever. And I didn't do any of that, which is good. So um, they are still interviewing people next week. I think they actually let me come for an interview in first because they wanted to meet me before, we, before I go away, which was really, really nice of them. So in the beginning of next week, I should hear back from that. So if you're interested, I'll probably post something on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. So you might want to have a look there. I'll probably keep you posted on that. But yeah, I, I feel like it went really, really well. I mean, it could, of course it could go either way. I don't know who else applied, but I'm actually really, really happy with how it went. And I think even if I don't get it, if I have another job interview, I will be much more relaxed. And it was definitely a good experience to practice as well. So yeah, I'm really, really happy about that. After the interview on Thursday, Kai and I went out for a really, really nice dinner to just kind of celebrate. And yeah, that was really, really nice as well. And I say really, really a lot, don't I? I feel so bad about that. I notice that when I rewatch my episodes sometimes and I feel like I just talk like an absolute idiot. Um, anyways, um, so besides that, I've been getting ready to go away, of course, so I've been doing a lot of cleaning, but again, it feels like whenever you clean something or, you know, you try to get a grip with the apartment, new stuff happens and then you can start all over again, so that's been a little stressful. 
I've also, as you probably heard, I got a major cold. Um, so I've been not feeling that great as well, but it is better now. I had a really bad sort of throat ache, which has gone away now, so I'm really happy about that. But it was quite funny this morning. I had to call again regarding the job interview. And I was, you know, trying to be all professional. And then, of course, as soon as I had my uh, interviewer on the phone, I was like, I <coughs> couldn't speak at all anymore, which was quite embarrassing, but also funny. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that we leave tomorrow night. Maybe I'll feel a little bit better until then. So today I'm just going to be resting and knitting and getting stuff in order. I haven't packed any of my knitting so far, so I need to pick what I want to take with me. Um, yeah, and on the weekend we have been running lots of errands as well, such as, you know, getting, going to the pharmacy and the drugstore to get, in case we get sick, to get medication and to get mosquito stuff and all that sort of stuff that, ha that you do when you travel. And it's really funny because we've traveled so much and this is probably the shortest travel like in Asia that I've ever done. Like I've done proper backpacking and all of that. But this time I'm just stressing myself out way more than I us usually do for a really, really short vacation to a very touristy place. So I'm not really sure why I'm stressing myself out so much. It's probably just a matter of all the things that's, that, that have been going on at once. And, you know, so anyways, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this week. I feel like I can't possibly say that I'm going away tomorrow because there's so much stuff everywhere and I really just need to get cracking on that. But I'm also looking forward to just hanging out. I really wanted to get a podcast episode out before we leave. I was actually, when I was in bed sick on the weekend, I was thinking, what if I can't record a podcast before we go and then you guys will be disappointed. And I know I'm doing this all for fun and on my own time, so I don't have to do anything. But I was really, really looking forward to talking to you guys one more time before we leave. Um, regarding yarn stories, I'm not planning to go yarn shopping. The only real opportunity I would have, I imagine, is in Bangkok, where we'll be for the last five days of our trip. So if you either have been to Bangkok to um, buy yarn, or if you live in Bangkok, and you have any yarn shop suggestions, do let me know, please. I would love to know, but I haven't done any research so far, and I'm not really sure if we're going to have time. Because we kind of planned everything very, very loosely. We only have accommodation planned for the first three days, and we're just going to see how we go. So I'm not really sure if we're going to spend the last five days in Bangkok or if we're going to be doing other things as well. So, but if you have been yarn shopping in Bangkok, do let me know. So I'm finding it surprisingly hard to say goodbye to you guys for three weeks because already when I don't record for a couple of days, I feel like I get out of practice a lot and I get overwhelmed and I really, really enjoy talking to you guys. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful three weeks. I would love to hear from you through Instagram or through the Ravelry group. Um, yeah, please keep the knitting talk up. I will definitely be checking the Ravelry group. Sometimes I don't answer right away, but I always read everything that you guys post. So I really, really enjoy hearing from you. How many times can I say that? I'm such a moron today. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention before is um, for the brioche with a twist shawl, I also created a thread in the Ravelry group. So if you are knitting one, please um, feel free to share your works in progress or your yarn choices, or if you have any questions, post them in there. And for those of you who do knit brioche, who have knit the pattern already, maybe you can help each other out as well. I think that would be really, really nice because I'm happy to answer questions. But like I said, I'm going to be in Thailand, so I'm not going to be, be able to answer everything immediately. So. If you just want to have a look or chat about yarns or just show your finished objects or works in progress for this pattern, please feel free to just stop by and leave a comment. So that's definitely it. I'm just going to stop rambling now. It was lovely to catch up with you. I hope you have a great three weeks and catch up with me through social media. I'm already looking forward to podcasting next in three weeks. Um, happy knitting and thank you so much for watching. Bye.